Jessica, you had shared some things with me before about your loyalty approach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think loyalty, especially if you're in an environment where you have to really understand a single channel, and many of us don't like to say that word, we like to think multi-channel. Um, in the case of some of the brands at Estee Lauder where we do not have a freestanding store, let's say, we have to start understanding what are those sort of inherent, unique qualities that live in a single channel, especially online. And loyalty has um, sort of had a natural fit for us with um, as many sites today are introducing automatic replenishment for either skincare or different types of products that just like vitamins have a very natural replenishment cycle. So loyalty for us may have a very nice natural fit as it relates to automatic replenishment and knowing we can bring her back and reward her for that. So it's a little bit of a service married with obviously retention. I wonder if that replenishment strategy works in apparel and, and you know, houseware or other verticals. Well, I would say at Kenneth Cole, I, I haven't seen the replenishment need yet, but uh, when I was at Tommy Hilfiger, the children's clothing was replenishable. So, you know, you can probably follow up too. You can, you, you can anticipate the back to school push and replenishables for what I would call um, commoditized products like polos, oxfords, pairs of shorts that, you know, are going to get grass stains and or, um, you know, the new season's colors because your kids gone from four years, you know, 14 to 5 teeth. Um, those are big punishables, and you can absolutely set cadences and triggers for that sort of stuff, which I've seen. Um, are there any specific technologies that um, you guys are investing in now or have invested in that you think that you are aligning? You can either talk about the type of technology or the vendor, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but just over the last year or, or what you're currently investing in. I know, Tom, you mentioned a few during your, yours around personalization yeah. and recommendations. Any others? We have a new platform, our platform. You know, one, of the, one of the things that I've um, looked at that I know has a serious ROI and it's, it's actually email marketing and um, sort of remarketing. So we do this thing where we send out an email and if you don't open it up, um, we resend it to you within a certain time frame. Um, and uh, you know, I don't know what the technical term for it is. It's very, it's sort of new. There aren't that many email providers that that have um, a system that allows you to kind of set up all these triggers, but you can have many triggers or, or one trigger. Um, and uh, we found it to, to have a huge ROI for us. It actually got us through our holiday season. We, we met our, our goal um, with no problem using it. So uh, that to me is a, you know, it's not uh, that new of a technology, but it's a new way of using email technology. So that's one that I well, I could be, I could be everybody's money maker. <laughs> yes, I think what hitting on is a very valid point, right? And I think a lot of folks overlook the fact that we've got this rich data source, and how do I market to that in a way that I can see immediate ROI? And certainly, email triggers and email triggering campaigns is a big component of that. And, and so, sort of dovetailing on the comment that you made, um, a, well, a great welcome program would certainly lead to more uh, fulfillment refined in your relationship with your client. So. It's not only you know, when you have them as a customer, it's how you bring them on into your, into your organization. That's really a really key component of your overall strategy. How about those of you that have international sites? We have international sites. I don't want to. <laughs> we have international sites that we're localizing, right? So, um, and I'm also using translation. So, translation technology has come a long way, um, you know, in even the last five years. And to where you don't need to have humans uh, translating, which can be very cumbersome, obviously, especially if you're translating um, into many different languages. Um, so now it can be sort of automated, and they can also automate some of the back-end um, messaging that needs to uh, go out with your campaigns at a fairly low cost, I and mean, it's for, you know, fairly reasonable. So for me, that's, that's big from an international uh, standpoint, uh, obviously. Right. So, um, Here's an interesting question. What is there a certain innovation or type of innovation that you consider that you chose not to do? Or maybe you're waiting on? Um, I have one that uh, probably many of you in the room have encountered um, possibly vendors. This probably isn't your area. Um, it, it really comes down to obviously in the, in the cosmetics and beauty world, it's really narrowing in on the makeover tool. So there's many makeover tools. They've been in the space for at least nine years, and I'm sure many of us who have met with different types of vendors, some are elegant, some are close to being obviously more tailored for your brand needs and your look and feel, and some are clunky. 
Um, I think we have one really strong example that's in the marketplace now that was a pilot and um, done with a really well-chosen vendor, which was Estee Lauder, um, launched a um, sort of a play with color makeover tool that was done very on brand, lots of engagement, and has a way, obviously, living on your app tray like a widget does um, to be updated to push information. So I think that's one area where many of our brands have held back. Mm -hmm. It's a natural fit for us to go there, but there's many brands that want to remain aspirational and not have someone upload their own photo. And now today it is all about your own photo. So I think it's something we've waited on, and I think we're learning a lot from what we've seen at FJ Modern. So. Do you feel like you're waiting for the technology to catch up with the, the, the need? I will say we were, and that was the case for a while. I think there was a lot of color accuracy errors and trying to put blush on as you play with color. We've seen through the vendor as to want to work with a lot of accuracy and really fine tuning and what that experience is like on the face, especially if it's your own face, then it gets really personal. So um, we think that that's been a really well chosen there's, there's such a fine line between having a bad experience, I guess, right? That you've got to toe that line carefully. Exactly, exactly. 